next is something called latimer diagrams this is a sequence of uh, redox changes when involved then for a particular intermediate change what is the emf involved how to find the emf and the intermediate change is dispro disproportionate or not or which direction of the reaction is feasible or not feasible all this we can understand using this latimer diagram let us see what exactly it is for example if this is basically we use it for such cases where there is a sequence of redox changes means one particular element this is particularly useful in the, the those cases where one particular element can exhibit variable oxidation states for example if you take the case of chlorine cl minus oxidize it to chlorine chlorine to clo minus clo minus to clo2 minus clo2 minus to clo3 minus clo3 minus to clo4 minus here this is minus 1 0 plus 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 and also we have these are all of course oxidations permanganate to manganate manganate to mn4 mn4 to mn2 plus this sequence also if you take here this is plus 7 plus 6 plus 4 plus 2 so like this and iron to fe2 plus fe3 plus so when we have these kind of sequential redox changes then to determine emf for any intermediate change for each change if you are given the values e1 e2 E three, E four, E five, like this. If the values are given for each change, then, for example, if we want to determine E for this, how to determine that? Or if this is given, then what is the intermediate for this? Suppose E two is not given, then how to determine this? Any such intermediate changes to determine. this latimer diagrams is useful next also a particular change suppose for example cl2 to clo2 minus is it disproportionate or not or so, sorry here chlorine on one side it is oxidizing to clo minus on the other side it can also reduce it to cl minus it's possible but the question is cl2 can disproportionate means simultaneously can it undergo oxidation and reduction or not that also we can determine that now let's see how to do it cl minus it's oxidized to cl2 cl2 to clo minus clo minus to clo2 minus clo2 minus to clo3 minus clo3 minus to CLO4 minus. When you see this uh, sequence, for example, suppose if it is given that for a change chloride to chlorine, if the EMF is E1, chlorine to hypochlorite E2, hypochlorite to chloride E3, chloride to chlorate E4, chloride to perchlorate E5. These are the EMF. Now, first we are asked to determine Cl2 to ClO3 minus. What is the E? So here the sequence is that here EMF is not an additive property. EMF is not an additive property, but thermodynamical properties like delta G, delta H, delta S, they are all additive. Delta G, delta H, delta S, they are all additive. so what we do is 
the non additive property we convert into an additive property and from that again we get back the non additive property for the required change so for example like for now for uh, cl22 clo minus as this is e1 for this you convert this e1 into a thermodynamical property that is free energy determine delta g1 delta g1 is equal to minus n1 f e1 now cl22 clo minus is over clo minus 2 clo2 minus this emf change is e2 and for this the free energy change delta g2 is equal to minus n2 f e2 from here to here the n factor is here it is 2 into 0 and here it is 2 into plus 1 so the n factor is 2 so here n is equal to 2 2 f e1 and hypochlorite to chloride chloride here also the n factor is 2 here it is plus 1 to plus 3 so n factor is 2 minus 2 f e2 and chloride to chlorate clo3 minus this is plus 3 to plus 5 n factor is 2 here delta g3 is equal to minus n3 f e3 that is again minus 2 f e3 now what we require is add all the three then what you will get is chloride to clo3 minus here it is minus 1 and here it is plus 5 and here the n factor is 6 now this overall delta g is equal to delta g1 plus delta g2 plus delta g3 which is equal to minus 2f into e1 plus e2 plus e3 by because this delta g is equal to minus nf e cell this is equal to this so from this what you can write is that here this is 6 so e e cell now this e is equal to minus 2f e1 plus e2 plus e3 by nf that is 6 f so this is equal to finally e1 plus e2 plus e3 by 3 e is equal to e1 this e is equal to e1 plus e2 plus e3 so this is what you have to write it down here this is here this e1 is actually this e2 okay so like this you can determine the e value for any required change now also whether this chlorine can disproportionate to clo minus to cl minus or not how do we know for that or clo cl2 to clo3 minus to cl minus that now let us see now chlorine disproportionation to chloride and perchlorate whether this reaction we know that chemically this reaction is feasible in basic medium now this is feasible or not feasible with the help of emf values how do we determine now cl2 to cl minus cl minus to cl2 it is even so for this it is minus even and for this it is cl2 to clo3 minus that is e2 e3 e4 so this change is here e is equal to this is i'll say some e where this minus nf e is equal to now this n is 2 into 0 to 2 into plus 5 so this n factor is 10 so minus this minus nf e is this change clo3 minus is equal to from here to here like previously what we told in the previous board that from here to here it is minus nfe that is equal to minus 10f e 
is equal to from here to here n factor is 2 minus 2 f e 2 minus 2 f e 3 minus 2 f e 4. This if you, you have to take. Now, from this, this is equal to e is equal to e 2 plus e 3 plus e 4 2 f by 10 f. So, divided by 5. Now, you will get this right fine. So, here whether this is whether this disproportionation is possible or not possible on the basis of EMF how do we determine is that. Now, for the reduction delta g reduction is equal to minus n, fa n factor for this is 2 minus 2 f minus e 1 that is equal to 2 f e 1 delta g oxidation is equal to now for this this is e minus n f e that n is equal to 10. So, it is minus 10 f e this e is equal to e 2 plus e 3 plus e 4 by 5. Now, you take these two delta g r plus delta g naught if this result is negative if this result is negative then disproportionation takes place disproportionation occurs delta g r plus delta g o that is free energy change involved in the reduction plus free energy change involved in the oxidation of this chlorine that is for this reduction and for this oxidation. From the values of E, we can estimate what is the net delta G means for overall reaction delta G. This overall delta G is what we are determining here in terms of this. So, this delta G overall if it is negative then the reaction is said to be spontaneous and the reaction is said to be dis disproportionation or in other words simple that that disproportionation reaction can occur under the given conditions. If this delta G is positive disproportionation does not take place straight away we can comment on that. This is what is the use of Latimer diagrams. This way of representing the sequential changes which helps in determining the EMF of any intermediate step for any intermediate reduction is what is called Latimer diagram and this is how we have to do the calculations.